beep beep. First one. It's a party. Okay, I think that this is what it's going to be. We've got three left in the incubator that might still hatch, but it's looking like this is our 17. They're so cute. Good morning. Good morning. Now it's mostly barred rocks. With a few um, olive eggers in there. Anyway, don't want to bother them. Of course, we've got the chicken police here. Helping out. Hey guys, welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. Um, I'm doing morning chores this morning. As you can see, we uh, have baby chicks. The first batch of some uh, have arrived. And um, that is the first batch in the process of hatching out barred rock chicks for us to grow up as meat. Uh, so a bit of an experience for us on our homestead. They are a dual purpose breed. Uh, so they're, um, they are used for this. It does take longer for them to grow out. It takes, from what I have read, it takes about seven months. And in my experience of raising lots of barred rocks, that's about correct. Um, so we will have grow up these barred rock chicks the ones that we don't sell, we are also selling barred rock chicks at the farm stand. Um, and because I have a pure flock. Uh, and then there's also some um, olive eggers in there because I'm growing my olive egger flock because that flock is very small. I only have like seven of those. And I like a colorful basket and I like to sell a colorful carton at, at the farm stand. So um, that is the the reason behind that and of course it's spring so we gotta have babies on the farm so chicks it is uh, i'm headed out to go give billy jean her grain and velvet her grain uh out to pasture all the horses are out to pasture um so come along let's see what we can do today
uh, it does look like I need to make chicken feed. Um, I went ahead and took the eggs in the house and the bag um, of stuff that I was feeding them is just basically their treats. Uh, it is, you know, mealworms, um, army larva, you know, there's a bunch of different bugs in there um, and they're like dried, dehydrated, um, so they're dead. And um, then of course their waters are fine today and I went ahead and refilled the oyster shells and um, the olive egg or coop needed salt. So those were the two things that I'm, um, that I fed them. And I am aware uh, that Yang, the rooster in the olive agar flock, uh, he lost all of his back feathers uh, through his molt and he is just now getting them back. Um, you can put apple cider vinegar in your water to help with that if you've got, you know, if it's not mites, um, if it's not, you know, anything like bugs, pests, or anything like that. Apple cider vinegar um, in, in the water helps with that, uh, as well as just, you know, good quality feed. So uh, he, for whatever reason, was picking on himself. He does not have mites, I've checked. Um, and of course, my flock is on a regular treatment of DE, diatomaceous earth, for um, mites and bugs and stuff like that. But sometimes we still get them. When we're treating naturally, sometimes it still happens. So I did check and he doesn't have them. Um, but I did kind of amp up the apple cider vinegar a little bit. I had gotten a little lax on it over the winter um, just because it's cold and I don't, you know, don't really enjoy being out here a whole lot. Um, so I kind of uh, got a little lax on the apple cider vinegar. So stepped up my game on that and, hope, and he is gaining, uh, gaining feathers and getting feathers back. So things are looking up. Miss Velvet still has not come up for her grain. So, and I get to go to work. I get to groom a new Great Pyrenees today. So super excited about that. Also today is the day of the total eclipse. Um, and here where we're at in Arkansas is a pretty primo place. So I may, if I have, if I have a moment, um, I may go out with my glasses and see if I can catch a glimpse of it for you guys. I have already seen it. We were in Oregon in 2017, the last total eclipse. We were in primo area there. Um, so I've already seen it and, you know, watched the whole thing, um, and it's really cool, uh, but I'm, I'm working today, so I don't know if I'll catch it, but just in case I do, just so you guys know what the heck is happening, today is the total solar eclipse. She gets to go to work. Super exciting. Yes. Super exciting. I must say, it's a beautiful walk to work. Hey, Mags. You enjoying your time out to pasture? Mr. Chance. Sweet Grace. She's got the prettiest eyes. Such a good girl. Okay. Hi ho, hi ho. Off to work we go. And the farm stands open today, 10 to 2, so there's that also. We got this area here cleaned up yesterday. Mr. Wonderful did that um, because we have company coming. And I'm so excited. I love sharing my farm with people. So I'm super excited for my company to get here. They're from Oregon. Out here. You're okay, Hops. 
That's pretty cool. I don't remember it being that cool in Oregon. brightens back up okay guys it is the next day uh, really really cool transformation on that uh, on that dog um, and then it was supposed to rain today and so I decided to be wise and I needed to mow so I mowed yesterday and so now I'm back today uh, and we're back unloading feed. I also went to the feed store yesterday uh, just to get a, couple, a few things for the chicken feed. Um, I got corn chops and then I also got layer pellets. Uh, you know, we're in peak egg season and I am also hatching out chicks right now. So uh, I do always mix my own feed, but there are times of the year where I like to add in layer pellets too, just to make sure that they're getting everything that they need to be at their very peak performance. So I'm going to finish unloading that. Um, and then we will make up some chicken feed and move on. But I just wanted you to know it is the next day. Yes. My wardrobe has changed. Our company is coming today. The solar eclipse was yesterday. Uh, and the noise in the background is Mr. Wonderful using the planer to uh, make cutting boards. So a little bit noisy, but I might just go ahead and dub over music if it's too loud. Uh, but here we go. Check on the beep beeps. Hi beep beeps. They're all still doing good. They're doing good.
This is turning into a kind of a chicken video, which wasn't my intention, but that's just sometimes the way that it goes. Uh, uh, and so I'm fairly low on variety in my feed room right now. Um, so what that was, was that was three scoops of, um, that's how I measure is by the scoop, three scoops of layer pellet, three scoops of corn chops, one scoop of soybean meal, and one scoop of oats. Um, if you are uh, anti-soy or, you know, soy intolerant, uh, then just don't mix in the soy. Uh, usually, I'm missing quite a few things. So I'm missing peas, millet, uh, sunflower seeds, flax. So I'm missing quite a few things in my wheat regimen. Um, which is why I wanted to just go ahead and get a layer pellet because I, my feed room is pretty low and I've told you guys this before, um, but just in case you're new here or you missed that video, I have to go to like five different feed stores to get all of the ingredients for making my own creep feed for Billie Jean and my own chicken feed. I choose to make my own chicken feed. It is just my belief um, that I it makes me feel like I'm I'm just being an overachiever chicken mom. Um, I like to make my own feed, give them a variety, rather than them just eating the same pellet all the time. Uh, but I have to go to five different feed stores in five different towns in order to have a full stocked feed room. So there are many times when my feed room is not fully stocked. In those times, I make sure that I, they are getting the nutrition that they need by just buying the run-of-the-mill feed and mixing it in with whatever I've got. So they still have variety, but I know they're getting the nutrition that they need. Plus some because they get bugs and salt and all that stuff. So anywho, let's go out there. Okay, so there's my egg bucket today, and I'm keeping them separated because we need to reload the incubator. So these are all barred rocks, purebred barred rocks, and this is the mixed flock. So I will go in and put all of these in the incubator. Okay, so I just emptied out the remaining eggs this morning from this and cleaned it, of course. So now I will go ahead and refill it. And just 
pretty humid, so I'm actually not gonna add any water for the time being. And so I'll show you the top of this. And this is a, a Nature Right 360. Uh, it's got a vent here. I went ahead and opened the vent all the way up. There's my temperature. There's my humidity. And my humidity is supposed to be at, it's 47 to 55, 50 being ideal uh, right now. And then, of course, if you press this, it is day zero. I had to stop to figure out, I had to read the instructions. So I needed to, to reset the, reset everything by holding down the menu button for three seconds. But now it's back to zero days. Okay, finally got it right. Um, so we ended up needing to go to the menu um, and reset the days, but we got it. Uh, we had to do a little Google, but we got it. So I'm gonna set it back up. Now it reads 21 days, and that's how many days you have to hatch. not want to wash your eggs before putting them in the incubator. Do not wash them. Seal is good, and we are incubating. All right, check these out, you guys. Sourdough. hamburger buns. Little man, you've been here all day. All day you've been here. Cutie patootie. I don't know who he belongs to. The neighbors know who he belongs to. I mean, he belongs to somebody, um, but he uh, comes and visits me on a very regular basis. He has a home, but he digs out. His dad locks him up when he goes to work and then he digs out and then uh, he comes over here and visits and then he leaves and goes home before nightfall.
Look at how pretty this lettuce is, even as a baby. Look at the color on that seedling. That is the Flash Butter Gem. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, you guys, I think I'm going to leave you there. I hope that you had a beautiful day, and I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on mine and yesterday. Uh, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Yours truly.